Morning, everybody. It is uh, just about 10 o'clock on, on a Friday morning. Rainy, miserable, or inside. Anyway, um, uh, once again, I hope you're all well and um, take care of yourself, take care of each other. Um, and enjoy, I mean, you might as well enjoy yourself. Do something. I, as I think I mentioned in another video, you know, try to. Try to read something and uh, watch a good movie if you can find one. Um, I would write also. Um, somehow I think keeping a journal is even more precious right now um, <clears throat> because we're all experiencing this sort of sequestering and quarantining for the for the first time. We've never done this before, so uh, new experiences, new feelings, new emotions, new new ideas. Uh, and as I as I try to tell all my students, you know, in this particular situation, just try to come out of this better than you went into it. Uh, not just physically, I mean mentally, emotionally, intellectually. Um, anyway, this particular video is not about um, the course proper. It's about the proficiency exam. So let's talk about this. Uh, I may have talked about this in class early on. The proficiency exam, very simply, is uh, is a way of assessing uh, a department being able for to show that it's doing what it's supposed to do, basically. And all uh, all the departments have ways of assessing themselves, uh, and very some statistically, some of them in terms of essays, uh, whatever. Um, just to make sure, so we 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 have required courses. Um, the uh, people in charge uh, and, and others want to know that these courses are justifiable. Very simply, you know, that we should be better writers at the end of these things than we were before them, on some level, at least statistically. So that's what they, that's the impetus behind the proficiency exam. Or in this CUNY system, they have a, some sort of a writing test too, which I'm, I, and I'm involved with that as well. And everyone's got something. In the past, it used to be uh, you would, toward the end of the uh, WSC2 course, in the, as it is still, you'd get, uh, a, there'd be a period of time toward the end when they would make a, a, a small, a long, like a four or five page essay available to you. And um, you have to read it, download it, read it, whatever, uh, get to know it. It's on some topic, whatever topic it is. The topics vary. And then uh, the day of the essay, you'd show up in the classroom the day of the essay, and you would get a short one, like a one-page essay by a different writer, different everything, on the same topic. Now you have two essays on the same topic, write an essay about this. They called it an argument. The, um, and that's what it was. It's, it's still looking at two pieces of writing, but that's where it changes. Because one of those pieces of writing is one something that you will have written or have written already. I'll get to that in, in, a, in a minute. First, uh, I think the prompt will say something along the lines of write an argument. You need to understand what they mean by argument here, okay? It's important. D depending upon the topic, and the topic is going to vary this time a bit because you will have written an essay and you're all writing different essays. So the topic's in some ways might be different, but this is the same topic insofar as it's your essay. Everyone's dealing with your own essay. Um, by argument, that, and this is really good for us because this is the way I always have handled my WSE 1 and WSE 2 classes, and sometimes it can be confounding to my students, I know, but I need you to have your own perspective on things. This is called critical thinking. So sometimes students see the word argument and they think, okay, I've got to be for or against, agree, disagree, like, dislike, pro, con. It doesn't have to be that way. By argument, we just need for you to be able to take a position on something and present your perspective in a way that's clear with support from the uh, articles. That's really it. It's not, it's, nothing more than that uh, again depending on the topic it can be particularly binary and like boom there's two sides battling it out but it really rarely is that so here's what's gonna happen um, there uh, 
there's a, a, a collection of essays um, all about um, bad, it's called Bad Ideas About Writing. And it's a whole bunch of essays by a variety of writers that take on various elements of teaching and writing over the years and they dispute them. Uh, I've read a couple of them. I have it on, you know, I'm, I have a copy of it online. I'm going to try to get through most of it just so I know what they're talking about. Um, and they're going to use one of those. I don't know which one they're going to use yet. They haven't told us. But it's, they're all short. They're about two or three pages long, not, not even. And they're um, very easy to read. And they all talk about writing, about the, something about the composition process. And this is where, again, I think that we have an advantage here. Now, any of my students have an advantage, I think, because this is what I've been doing for years, and that is asking you not just to fulfill the requirements of an, of an assignment, like, Professor, how many pages, how many words, you want me to have five paragraphs, this, this. You've all heard me say that these are just ingredients to a bigger issue. The real issue is what do you want to say? You you have to have an opinion or a perspective or a viewpoint. Uh, in this particular class about pop culture, I need you to write not about, for instance, not about fashion or drugs or um, ro romance, but how it actually is reflected in the culture. And that's a very different thing than saying, drugs are a problem in this country, here's why, don't do drugs, drugs are bad. That's not the issue, that's it. That's our English, WSC one topic, uh, how drugs are being used in this culture, in this pop culture, is a very different topic. And it asks you to have an opinion because nobody has solid answers. So I need you to have a perspective, an opinion, a viewpoint. So they want you to have that about something that you have written. So it's really asking you to, you to be sort of step back, weirdly reflective about your own intentions here. So it's more like taking an essay of your own and saying, okay, well, here's what I had in mind. Here's what I was trying to say. And here's, here are the challenges that I found in it. Here is what, here's what I had trouble with. Um, here's what I decided to do. It's rhetoric. I talk about rhetoric in my WSC one classes and in my two classes. Rhetoric is not just what you say, it's how you say it. Um, you know, choosing, to, hmm, how can I put that? That's rhetorical. So it's, it's, it's about, what is going on here with this? Let me get rid of this guy, hang on. Strange. Um, so you need to be thinking more critically about what you've just done, not just, again, how many words, how many paragraphs, you know, where's the thesis? Um, and these are the things that I keep commanding and demanding and desiring from everybody in their, in their writing. And it can be a pain in the neck. I know I know I can be demanding like that, but uh, I need you to, if I can have you think about your own work, that becomes such a, 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 a powerful thing for your, any kind of writing that you do in the future. And this is going to require more reflexive, reflectiveness, more uh, critical thinking on your part. So, um, what do you need to do? The first thing you need to do is go back and look at all three essays for the course. Um, you can even think about the fourth essay if you want. But right now, certainly look at the, at the last three. It turns out you can use any of the essays that we've written. They do need the essays to have been, two things that need to be done. One is they all have to have had or uh, secondary sources, which is why I required it for the last paper. If you want, if you really like your first essay, you got a good grade on it, you're really happy with it, but it didn't have any secondary sources, go back and add some secondary sources. That's fine. Um, again, the, the idea of using and going back to your essays is important. They want you to have that reflective, critical thinking about your own work, not just, I, I did it, I got the four pages, I'm done. So go back and add some secondary sources. It doesn't have to be a lot, you know, three, four at most, uh, if that, you know, it doesn't, it has, as long as it has some, and obviously the essay's been revised. So it's secondary sources and been revised. That doesn't mean you have to have had it in my revision column, but that you've been back to it more than once. 
then you're gonna they're gonna you're gonna get this essay the day of the of the uh, proficiency exam. You'll read it, and it's going to give you a particular slant on things, just the, sort of a way of approaching your essay. And then you're going to be writing, based on that, an essay about you writing your essay. Whatever that, however you want to take that. It's very broad, um, and it does ask us to think about things that we haven't done before. I mean, a lot of us, a lot of you haven't done before. So, as I said, you'll be supplied with an essay about writing. It's a general thing about writing. You'll have, you, you'll be up, on that day, you'll be uploading your essay to the um, PE thing on Blackboard. You'll have that essay there as well. Um, and then you'll write an essay about your essay. Now, it should not, I stress the word not, it's not gonna sound like, okay, uh, here's a sentence, uh, this sentence means this. Here's what I meant here. It's not like taking a, a silly line by line recitation explication of a poem. This is more speaking theoretical about you as an intelligent writer with a perspective. Here's what I'm trying to get across and here's how I went about doing it. And here's where the, here are the challenges I faced and here's how I conquered those challenges and, and made it work. Um, ultimately, this is, as they're saying, if you watch the video already, I think, on the Blackboard page, they're calling it a kinder uh, proficiency exam. Again, them using the word kind is sort of an example of what they're asking you to do. So, for instance, prior to this, the old Provincy exam, which is like, as I said, two essays, write a paper, and boom. Uh, but they had to think about how can they present another kind, given the fact that we're all doing this online and we're not all in different states and countries even. And so they wanted to do something that was a little bit more pleasing. They didn't want to call it pleasing, so they called it kinder. The choice of the word kinder in this case is a rhetorical choice. How do I make this more palatable? to a whole bunch of people who are not just sitting in the classroom together, but are doing an essay together scattered all over the country and the world. So um, that is an, that's sort of an example. So if they were writing a paper about their paper, they may say, well, we decided to use the word kinder. It's almost like advertising uh, in, in getting this point across. And it's that kind of, like you can talk about your, your ideas, your structure, the rhetoric that you use, whether the tone of the essay, the particular vocabulary words chosen here or there, uh, the kind of sources that you've used. Uh, these things are all things that you put, you have to put your work into to get that point across. Uh, and that's what they want you to be addressing. Um, so there you go. That's what this is. So what do you have to do now? You need to pick an essay. Again, it can be the next one coming if you want, or it could be one of the last three. Make sure it's got secondary sources. Make sure you're happy with it and you feel like you've got something to say about not just the topic itself, but about the um, the uh, the writing of it. Remember, this is not about the topic. If you wrote about, you know, fashion, it's not about, I'm gonna talk about fashion again. Certainly that's gonna come up, but you will, it's how you went about doing this. Uh, if I can use a musical reference, for instance, you know, if you're writing, you're working on a song. Sometimes I, I, I learn the, I learn the music of the chords to a song I'm playing, you know, and it's simple, you know, it's, you know, it's C F G, the chords, right? And um, it's fine, but then I play it, get out, this is boring, and so I, I add notes to it. I make it a. You know, I, I turn it into sevenths or minors, and I try and play the same thing, or I play the chords in different octaves. Uh, it's all the same, you know, the same basic idea, but I rhetorically, musically, rhetorically, I change up the sound of it. And so you get a different product, even though it's the same song. Um, sometimes it's just a matter of making it faster or slower. Um, 
all of those things. And you've all heard people do versions of songs. And they might say, well, I did this, I slowed it down here, I added a horn, I changed the tempo, I, you know, whatever. Uh, these things all make, sometimes they don't make a difference at all. Sometimes they're astoundingly uh, creative and make you listen to the song another way. But they're not talking about the, the lyrics, they're talking, or even the melody, they're talking about the way it's been presented. And that's what this PE is asking you to do about your essay. So think of your essay as a piece of music that you were constructing or changing around or giving a version of. Um, and that's it, okay? That's the first, that's what you have to do. That's what this, this PE is gonna be. It's gonna be done synchronously, synchronously. Uh, that is, it, when we get the usual finals schedule, it'll be whatever it is, a day that we normally meet at that time. Uh, and you'll all, be, you'll all be contacted somehow on online and you'll be able to open it up and do it from wherever you are. Uh, you'll have, I think, two hours and 20 minutes or something like that to do it. And um, that's it. You, you write the essay and then it gets uploaded and somebody grades it. We don't let, they don't let the, own, the professor grade their own students. Although I don't know what's happening in this particular climate. Who knows, I may end up getting all your essays anyway. And I can look at them anyway and add a grade to them myself if it needs that. Uh, so there you go, that's it. Now, I already sent out an email, you must have gotten it already, asking any of you who are out of the time zone. All right. If you're in Eastern Standard Time, it doesn't affect us because if we say meet at you know, 11.15, it's 11.15 for me, it's 11.15 for you. It doesn't matter, but if you live in on the West Coast and you're three hours earlier, we'd like to be able to accommodate you without having to get up three hours earlier to be with us at 11.15. Some of you I know are out of the country, so um, we, we need to know that too. So if you haven't let me know, and I don't know, I mean, I'm just going to collect your names and send them to somebody else, but if I find out who you can send that information to, I will, but um, I have a feeling it's just Eileen Greco over in the uh, writing department, but... I'll let you know. Um, and so that's it. So get get started looking for an essay of your own. And the essay that you'll have to read will be supplied to you. And I guarantee you they're not difficult to read. They're short. But it's just adding another source that you can use in your essay. So the proficiency exams are uh, just essays. They have a perspective. They don't have to be a binary argument. You do need to write one or two or maybe two or three little quotes. Uh, from the essay, uh, your own essay, and from the one you're given. Um, and that's it. The best thing you can do is to get in very clear and get out. You don't want to make a, a, a very lengthy essay, um, but you don't want to make it tiny either. You, know, you want to have a nice couple of pages, get in, get out, and um, be clear. Don't take any chances. You just enjoy yourself. You, even if you don't like writing, you got this. This is not a hard thing to do. Also keep in mind, very important, those of you who might be worried, this proficiency exam's got nothing to do with the course. You can completely screw this up and still get an A in my class, and vice versa. Um, it is required for graduation. That's why it's important to get this out of the way. Um, too many seniors wait until their senior year. I was just tutoring one just a couple of, about a month ago. Some guy, they weren't gonna let him graduate without passing this thing. He'd taken it two or three times already. Uh, he was just struggling with it, and I, I had to work with him online. We got him to got him again, and finally I got him to write a passing proficiency exam. So there you go. Um, make sure you have time to proofread. Uh, it's not a mystery. You've written essays before. This is just another one. Okay. Any questions? Please, you know how to get a hold of me. Um, that's it, everybody. Peace, and I will we'll get to more uh, as we wind down this uh, this course in pop culture all right peace